small and SMB and it contains the same kind of features and capabilities of an 800 but it also contains voice capabilities with the 1861 model that we can use it to be call to be Cisco Call Manager Express and Cisco Uni Express for voice and unified communications. For the Cisco ISR 2800, there are different models from a 2801 up to a 2851, for example. Same kind of features and capabilities of routing and switching to wireless and to voice, but it's kind of aimed for SMB and medium businesses. The Cisco ISR 3800 series is more aimed for medium and for large. The biggest difference between some of these is some of the port capabilities and LAN cards or modules that we can use for some of these devices. So you want to determine what are the requirements, what are the feature requirements, uh, some of the access connections like do we need gigabit, do we need um, an ATM connection, that sort of thing. Determine those details to uh, figure out the best possible router model to use. And there's other um, router models such as the Cisco ASR 1000 series which is a very beefy chassis that is really recommended for large be honest with you, for very large, it has like, um, it's, it's back plane can do more like 1.x um, terabit, so it's pretty massive. And other routers include the Cisco 7200 up to the Cisco 7600. And the 7600 is very similar to the Cisco Calis 6500 series. So we have the other um, devices, which is the Cisco Calis 4500 and the 6500. And these is what you would consider as layer 3 switches. And basically we can do not only switching like VLANs and trunking, span and tree, but it can also um, provide routing capabilities such as OSPF, even up to BGP. So this is a summary of some of these show commands, and we'll be talking about one of these commands, which is the show IP route. So show IP route is what you use on a routing device to look at the global routing table. Show IP protocols gives you information about all the routing protocols configured and some details about them. If you do show IP interface fast Ethernet 00, depending on what you're looking at, you can look at IP information on how that interface is configured. In terms of looking at the neighbor tables, that which we talked about is significant for EIGP and OSPF, I would do a show IP OSPF neighbor or show IP EIGRP neighbor where I can look at all of my adjacencies of which routers I am connected to and communicating with for sending route information. In terms of looking at topology tables for that particular routing protocol, I will use show IP EIGRP topology or show IP OSPF database to look at those topology um, details. In terms of BGP, I can do a show IP BGP summary to look at all of my BGP peers and other details about my Thomas system, my um, version number, etc. And I can look at a show IP BGP that can provide uh, route information that is learned via BGP from one of his peers, external or internal. Show IP route. Let's talk about this further. So this is one of the most critical things. If you're doing networking, you got to understand this. And honestly, it's not that difficult. So in the very top here, you see all these different codes. This is kind of like a legend here that's going to help you to kind of understand what is happening here. Here you see all these different kind of um, codes, like there's C's, a D, and even S, and even a little star here. This can tell you what those codes mean. C, for example, means connected, and connected means that there is, a, there is an actual interface on this router that is configured for a given network. S is for static routes. We have D for EIGRP, and there's other variations of EIGRP, which we talked about, the external EIGRP. There's uh, one for OSPF, there's R for REP, uh, and many other kind of details, including ISIS, which is another link state routing protocol, which we did not mention in this particular um, video. Star indicates a candidate default. What is that? In layman's terms, is the default gateway. Now, here it tells us the following. Gateway of last resort is 1090.1.253 to network 000. This is reflecting that the default gateway that this router will use is 10.90.1.253. 
Here are all the networks that the router knows about. Now, if I'm routing to a particular destination and that particular route or entry is not listed here, it's going to forward it to its default gateway, which is going to forward it to 1090.1.253. So let's talk about this further. So here we see a couple of connected interfaces. We see one, two, three, four. This one, for example, is saying that on we have an interface called VLAN3. So that's the actual v, that is the actual interface name, VLAN3 or VLAN2 and the other VLANs. That is directly connected. So this is the interface, and that and that the particular interface is on network 10.90.1.0/24. And the node address is dot one. This will only reflect the network portion, not the host information. So we see other connected interfaces. I see a two, 98, and 99. But we see two um, other entries, which has the code of D. D is used for EIGRP. So we know that we're learning two particular networks via EIGRP from another router. Those two subnets is 1090.21 and another one is .22. And it's learning these um, routes from one of his um, adjacencies, one of his neighbors, which is 1090.99.2. So if I'm talking to a host on 1090.21.15, let's make that up, this router, by looking at his routing table, will say, aha, we got a match, and I will now send that routing request, so to speak, to 1090.99.2. We also see information about how long this entry has been in the routing table, one day and five hours, and that the interface that this device is connected on, so to speak, is off of VLAN 633. Here we see two, um, two particular numbers. The first one indicates the administrative distance, which is 90. The other, which says 30, um, 72, is basically is the actual metric and for EIGRP which we talked about it uses the composite metric particularly with the bandwidth and the delay so it's taking the bandwidth and the delay times that by 256 it gives us this magical number so this is the actual metric so if there's another so if there's another path that this router knows about to get to the 21 network it's going to compare to say well which one has the lower metric the one with the lower metric based on the dual algorithm and what it's supposed to provide, will inject the one with the lowest metric into the routing table. Lastly, we have in the last line is S. So we have a static route configured, and the star reflects our default gateway. So basically, all zeros will reflect the default gateway. Uh, we see that one, the administrative distance for a static route is one. There's no particular metric and that the default gateway is out of 1091.253, which is the same information that we saw right up here for gateway of last resort. So this is how you can interpret and how to read the routing table. It's very, very useful of understanding what routes am I receiving and which path should I be taking. Hence, understanding how things should be routed. So this concludes our video of talking about IP routing at a high level. You can get more uh, information on configuring uh, IP routing and some of the protocols found at routehub.com/training. Thank you for watching.